It's time for the Success in Real Estate Show with Frankie Griffin, owner and instructor of Real Estate School for Success, broker in charge of the Palmetto Success Team, and author of Success in Real Estate. If you're interested in buying or selling a home, investing in real estate, or becoming a real estate agent, you'll enjoy the Success in Real Estate Show on FM News and Talk 100.1 WVOC. Now, here's Frankie Griffin. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Success in Real Estate. I'm Frankie Griffin, real estate broker in charge and educator here in South Carolina. Thank you for joining me this morning. I feel a little hoarse, but I, I feel pretty good today, and I hope you're going to have a great day. I know we got a lot of important things going on today, especially this afternoon, where these Gamecocks will be going down to Athens to um, show the Bulldogs some tricks or two, I'm sure. That's going to be a great game. And, you know, one of the things that we noticed last week, it, it pretty much, last week pretty much turned into a, a score prediction um, show between Georgia and Clemson. And I will go ahead and announce the winner. We have put it on our Facebook page, but the winner last week is Stephanie, who guessed the score of 37 to 34 which was awesome. And uh, she did predict Clemson to win 37-34. Of course, the actual score was 38-35. So that's pretty close. Stephanie, you are the winner. Uh, You can certainly give us a call at the Real Estate School for Success, and we will get you that winning uh, certificate so you can take classes at no charge at the Real Estate School for Success. And because it was such a big hit, I may very well ask for scores for the Carolina-Georgia game tonight, but it's only going to be during the last segment of this show. I do have some other things I want to talk about, but if you would like to give a prediction between the Carolina-Georgia game with the opportunity this week, we're going to give away a 50% discount. So, um, So it's about a $200 value. Uh, to put towards any class at the Real Estate School for Success. But again, that's going to be in the last segment, so you got a little bit of time to figure out what that score is going to be. Again, South Carolina versus Georgia. But, you know, we offer just about any real estate-type course training you can think of at our school, and we would love to help you if you're thinking about getting into real estate, um, we'd encourage you to go to our website. You can check us out at www.realestateschoolforsuccess.com. We'd love to uh, help you any way you can. You'll see all of our classes, the, um, the schedules, the dates, the prices. Everything's there. Even our phone number, if you if you don't find an answer to, to a question you've got, just give us a call. We'll certainly help you with that. Uh, love to have you come visit us sometime. We're located on St. Andrews Road. It's in the St. Andrews Center. used to be called Clusters of Whitehall. But we would love to have you come visit us, show you around in the classroom. It'll be a fun time. We'll answer any questions you have. Uh, we do have a class, a first-year sales class, which is to get your license starting up on Monday. Now, we'll tell you, there's only – maybe two possibly three seats left and because one of the things we do at our school we do not just take on uh, or we don't overfill the classroom let me put it that way um you know you know i always thought if i'm taking a class i want my seat and i want my space and i don't want to be crowded when i'm trying to take a class that i paid for so we don't do that Uh, We have so many seats, and once they're full, they're full. So we cut it off, and we've only got two or three others uh, or vacant seats, to my knowledge, right now. So you do not want to wait very long. You want to go ahead and jump in very quickly, go online, Real Estate School for Success, and go ahead and sign up for that class. Um, We've also got a home inspection course that's going to be starting up. It's a weekend class starting September 21st. Uh, you, you need to hurry up and get signed up for this one if that's something you're interested in. And if you know somebody thinking about getting into home inspection, please let them know about this class. we got a huge discount on this one. Um, it's going to be $450, which is almost about half of the price you're going to see anywhere else. It includes your book. It includes an on-site inspection 
Um, it's a great course. Uh, David DeBose will be teaching this class. He's been doing home inspections for many years. He's the current president of the home, of the um, Home Inspectors Association here in South Carolina. He helped write the state exam here in South Carolina. So he's very knowledgeable. You got an awesome instructor. Again, four hundred and fifty bucks, and it starts on September twenty first, is Saturday and Sunday. And it'll be for two weekends. Now, I will say that um, there is going to be a weekend in between the two weekends. So it starts September 21st, Saturday and Sunday. Then there's a weekend off. And then the, the second weekend will be on actually the third weekend from when it started. Hopefully I didn't confuse you too much there. But we would certainly love to help you with any training that you need. Again, our website is therealestateschoolforsuccess.com. Again, www.realestateschoolforsuccess.com. And let's go ahead and go straight to our phone lines, where right now we've got Alex on the line. How are you doing, Alex? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you? Oh, such a beautiful day today. Yes, sir. At least it's not raining. Ooh, isn't that the truth? Well, what's going on Alex's mind today? Um, I actually, I think I have been signed up for your classes starting on Monday, and um, I was told that if I possibly called in and asked for a discount, there was a little one that you could give away. Awesome. Um, well, I'll tell you what, Alex, since you called in, I will give you a 10% discount on whatever class you want to take. Yes, sir. Alex? I think, like I said, I'm signed up for Monday, so um, I'll be there That is go. so <laughs> awesome. You're gonna ha- it's going to be a great class. Um, and you'll find that even students that they'll tell me, even if I never decide to represent buyers and sellers, it's the most informative class they've ever taken. I've um, also heard that you're very fun. Well, I appreciate that. You don't put anybody to sleep is what I heard. <laughs> well, except myself. Uh, I do. do well, no. We're going to yeah, have a I lot of fun. So well, sweetie, I can't look. For, I look forward to seeing you on Monday. Okay, wonderful. All right. I hope you have a great day. You too. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. Um, well, if you have any questions for me today, the number here in studio is 978-9862. Again, 978-9862. I'll be more than happy to address any concerns or questions you have. But I'll just tell you, here's what I sort of want to talk about or focus on today. And it is the the role of the home inspector versus the role of the real estate agent. Um, I'm seeing and I'm certainly hearing um, a lot of different things that are a little bit concerning. But I feel, you know what? We can talk about it. We can work these things out. But it's got a lot to do with how the home inspection is being used today. And there there seems to be a move um, from what, say, 10 years ago, things are working on and happening a little bit different than they used to. So we want to talk about this and and how should, you know, when a buyer has a home inspection done on their home, you know, how should that home inspection be used? And and what kind of things should we go back to the seller asking to be fixed, replaced, repaired, or whatever they feel like needs to be done? But those are the things we want to talk about today. And would love to hear, especially if you're a real estate agent right now, I would love to hear your opinion, um, what you think, well, how do, we, how do you think this should this process should be handled? Um, are we doing it the right way today, or do you see things that are concerning to you? Uh, going, we're going to go ahead and take our break, um, but when we get back, we want to answer all these questions, and I certainly have some thoughts and comments that I'm going to make. But if you have any questions, give us, give us a call. The number is 978 9862 978 9862, you're listening to Success in Real Estate. I'm Frankie Griffin on FM News and Talk 100.1 WVOC. All right, good morning again. Welcome back. I'm Frankie Griffin, real estate broker in charge and educator in South Carolina. Thank you for joining me this morning, where today I want to focus or at least talk about the process and the role of the home inspector versus the role of the real estate agent. Because I, I think there's there's some misconceptions here, and I've heard a lot of comments back and forth about various home inspectors and their inspections and the types of things they're writing up. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, but before we do, I've actually got my buddy Erica West is on the line with me. How are you doing, Miss Erica? 
I'm Will. How are you, Frankie? This is such a beautiful day today. It is a gorgeous day. A gorgeous day for a Carolina win. Woohoo! Are you in town today? I am. So you didn't go to the game? No. Shocker, right? I'm actually in town. Yeah. How about that? Well, Erica West, if you again, if you don't recognize this voice, is the senior mortgage consultant with Mortgage Network. And um, as everybody knows, at least my mortgage go-to gal, because you just seem to know it all. And I say that Thank sincerely. You. I don't mean that in a, in a negative way at all. Um, I appreciate it. An awesome job. Well, what's going on in finance? Are the, and, of course, the, the question I always get, what are the rates now? I mean, we're, we're seeing, I'm going to be interested to see what rates do around the 17th of the month mm-hmm. um, and, and see, see if we're going to taper, see, see what's going on, especially when the, the new labor reports come out. I'll be interested to see, you know, what happens. Um, I'm not an economist. I definitely can't read into the future. Um, so I won't even try to guess what's going to happen. But rates, for a 30-year fix, rates are still really competitively low. Okay. They're still all-time historically low. You know, we're talking mid fours, low to mid fours. And you're um, right. That's still that's so low. So, I mean, I will be waiting with bated breath, on bated breath with everybody else to see kind of what rates do for the rest of the year. Well, we know home values are going up, yeah. um, or at least around here, it seems to be. And if you're thinking about buying a house, I mean, good grief. I mean, I think now's a good time to do it because the home values have been going up. Along with, um, unfortunately, I just, these rates just cannot stay this low. I don't see how they can. I'm shocked that they've been as low as they have for so long. I know. Me too. But, I mean, we may, we may be surprised. And we, we may see another, a, a little, a little teeny tiny drop, yeah. one last drop for the year. And, it, and that may take us through the winter, which I think would be fabulous. That would be, that would be a much needed yeah. um, push just to keep, uh, you know, my company is, is a, was started in Danvers, Massachusetts, and right now the southeast market is, is holding it strong. Our production has not decreased; mm-hmm. the rates have gone up since May, which is which is awesome. Yeah. Um, but I think that has a lot to do with what's going on in our market and home values, like you were saying. Mm-hmm. Um, so I haven't seen a whole lot of slowdown in that in that sense. People are still looking to purchase, refinance, um, looking at multiple properties they have to see. You know, this is. The last time they're going to have an opportunity to really evaluate their financial standing in their properties to see if there's anything they need to do with their financing. Okay. Hey, Eric, let me ask you a question about VA loans. Sure. This is something that I was asked earlier in the week, so I thought I'd pass it on to the expert. Sure. But if a buyer is purchasing a home with VA financing, of course, now when you have VA financing, there are certain buyer-related costs that the seller has to pay. Is that correct? That the seller cannot pay? That the seller has to pay. Yes, that is true. Yes. That is true. That's correct. They're, they're called um, non-allowable. Right. Now, mm-hmm. so could the seller, if, I mean, obviously they know the buyer is using VA financing, can the seller write into the contract a dollar amount that they will not exceed in those closing costs? We're typically, yes. However, the, the caveat is, and we need to ask Andy on specifically for, for the legal jargon and, and the requirements on the contract, but usually where the agent <laughs> gets away with it on either side is that they, usually it's the, the agent representing the buyer, they write the contract and they say, up to 3500 to include allowable and non-allowable. Right. Don't do that. Right. Don't, don't, don't do that because they, they automatically have to pay those non-allowable. Yeah. And so when you do that, you're kind of cheating your your buyer sure. out of a portion of closing costs that the, the seller is, it has to pay if the buyer is using VA financing. Yep. So, you know, my advice, we would definitely need to get Andy, Andy's mm-hmm. opinion, would be that if you're representing a buyer that is using VA financing, when you are negotiating closing costs in the contract, simply ask for a, a percentage amount or a dollar amount. Do not, you know, don't put it in there, allowables and non-allowables, because, you know, if you say for allowables, then you understand that, that the seller is responsible for that much of allowables on mm-hmm. top of the non-allowables that they have to pay. Absolutely. You put, does that make sense? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense, and that's exactly and I, what I wanted to hear you say. Yeah, and, and that's, that's what I see. And, and it, <laughs> people don't know, and they're like, well, what are non-allowables? I can give you a whole list. <laughs> um, we could be here a while. Junk fees. 
Yeah. Those, those are not allowable. It could be any number of things. You're absolutely mm-hmm. right. And some of it seemed like you, you may not even know what in the world that is. but And that's uh, the thing. And it's hard for, you know, most of the time, um, you know, I just make sure that, you know, if you're representing the buyer and you're a real estate agent, you know, if you're representing the buyer, you can get financing when you're negotiating closing costs, when you write it in the contract, mm-hmm. whatever amount you want, just say four allowables. Now, if you have a good agent on the other side, they're going to come back and say, well, we'll pay 3500 in allowables and not allowables. If you accept that, then there may be a portion of the allowables that the buyers are responsible for because the seller concessions are going to go to both. Well, sweetie, that's why you are the mortgage go-to gal. So tell, how can we get in touch with you? You can reach me on my cell phone at 803-528-5019. You can email me at us at mortgagenetwork.com. Or you can search me on Facebook, search for the Mortgage Get You Gal. Please go there and like my page and, and you know, ask me any questions you want. And there's, I hope, some helpful information on there for you. Awesome. Awesome. Sweet, I hope you have a great weekend. You too. Thank you so much, Frankie. All righty. You take care. Bye. All right, that was Erica West, mortgage consultant with Mortgage Network. She does an awesome job, as as does all of our sponsors and real estate partners. But if you couldn't get her information, just go to our website, which is realestateschoolforsuccess.com. Click on the radio link there, and there you'll see a list of all our partners along with their websites or contact information Um, Shouldn't have any problem getting in touch with them. But now, here's what I wanted to sort of focus on today. And again, if you have any questions or comments, um, please give me a call. The number is 978-9862. 978-9862. But here's what I'm hearing a lot about these home inspections, where a home inspector goes out and they write up a lot of stuff. And and, and quite frankly, most of it is just insignificant or, in, and you would think in many cases, nobody cares, quite frankly. I mean, there's uh, just very insignificant things. Well, you can't get upset with the home inspector for that. Um, the home inspector is paid to go out and identify and write up every defect they see. And and there's nothing in the agreement that says unless it's for um, unless it would cost ten dollars or less to fix, don't write that up. There's nothing that says that. So the home inspector, they're doing their job. They are writing up every little nitpicking thing they can find, and hopefully the larger things as well. Where I think the problems coming in, maybe we as real estate agents should do a little better job of educating our clients on, on this home inspection process. Um, I think the agents needs to make sure the buyer understands that home inspector is going to write up and they could write up several pages of, uh, in quote, defects, many of which may not really am- amount to anything. And a lot of it's probably things the buyer already knew just from looking or visiting the house to start with. Well, you can't, again, you can't get upset with the home, or excuse me, the, yeah, the home inspector for that. But should the buyer just send that inspection back to the seller and say, look, we want everything on this inspection fixed, repaired, repl- whatever it is, whatever the suggestion is, should the buyer do that? I, and, and that's sort of where my, my big question is today. And I can just tell you, in my opinion, the answer is no, I don't think so. I think the role of the home inspector, or at least for what we're trying to do, as or at least what I'm trying to get out of it as a buyer's representative, I expect the home inspector to not only write up all the stuff he finds, but what I'm most interested in are the latent defects. And again, a latent defect is anything that is not obvious um, to the a person just walking through or looking at the house. Um, typically we're not certainly not going to go crawl under the house and looking for things wrong. We're, and typically we don't go up in the attic looking for things wrong, but the home inspector does. Well, the, the things, and, and what I hear people classify as the cosmetic issues, um, those are most of it anyway, are things the buyer already knows. They saw it when they walked through the house. They know it's an issue. They saw it there. <clears throat> and, and let me, just for example, Maybe there is a crack in one of the windows. Um, 
again, it's not, uh, you know, it, well, it's a crack. I mean, no, uh, probably nobody wants a crack in the window. But, buyer, what's the chances you would see that? Probably a good chance. Well, I would think that your offer, when you make an offer, it would take those types of things into account. I know that if I'm, I don't like that crack, so I'm going to have to get the window replaced. Um, I'm going to make my offer knowing that i got to have a new window um, or at least a window pane or whatever it is I can do. What I, what I really don't think is very fair is when the buyer – makes their offer with that in mind then the home inspector go out have an inspection done <clears throat> the home inspector write it up and then the buyer go back now and ask the seller to fix or replace that pain um, because you've already priced it that was in your all you already knew about that so now you, you you you've got the seller agreeing to sell their house at a somewhat of a discounted price because of the issues you noted. But now that they've agreed to sell at that price, now you're trying to say, no, now we want you to actually go fix it and sell it at the lower price. And and I think they'd love to have your opinion. I know there are some real estate agents out there listening and have some opinions. Um, I want to hear them. Call me. The number here in the studio is 978 978- Nine eight six two nine seven eight ninety eight sixty two, and but but before I go any further, I also want to say this too. If you're thinking about selling your home, um, and you want to get it sold, and we've talked about this many times on this show, the presentation that you make online is going to get is going to determine number one how fast it's going to sell if it sells, and how much you can sell it for. Um, you've got to have a, a very attractive and professional presentation online because that's where buyers are looking today. I always recommend my buddy Jerry Belton. He's with Eagle Photography. He is a real estate photographer expert, and which means he just does real estate photography, and he does an excellent job at that. Um, he can come out, take these um, pr- very professional photographs. They are awesome. You can use it on the MLS, on the Internet, on your brochures, we- websites, w- whatever you want to use them for. He does a great job. In fact, you go, go, you go look at them. Decide for yourself. Look at some of the photos that he's done. You can go to his website at www.imagesbyeagle.com. Again, www dot images by eagle dot com and i think you'll be very impressed at what he does i can tell you he goes out on every property that i list um does a great job i mean you're looking at 150 bucks for the most part he's going to go out and provide you with some incredible photographs of your property um so check it out again eagle photography his phone number is 331 nine zero three five three three one nine zero three five and that's jerry belton well back to this discussion about the home inspection process um you know if if i'm a buyer you know i really i want the home inspector to write up every i don't care how nitpicky anybody else thinks it is i want it written up i want to see it just in case it was something maybe i missed or did not know about um so that's not the home inspector's problem because i've heard and a lot lot of agents have made the comments that home inspectors are killing a lot of deals because they're writing up the nitpicking things that don't matter and I just, I don't believe that. That's not what I'm seeing, at least with my clients, because the clients need to be educated. Um, and Or I say educated, they need to understand the process. And I think the real estate agent needs to be the one to make sure that they educate and explain that process. Um, I tell my buyers before the inspection's even done. Again, it's you're going to see a lot of stuff more than likely written up here Um, especially if it's the inspectors i like to use Um, they're going to write stuff up but does that mean it should cause you concern no buyer you're looking at a house say for example it's 20 years old it's going to if it's 20 years old there's probably going to be 20 years worth of wear and tear you're going to have that that's with any property Um, What you don't want to do, buyer, is to try to use the home inspection as a way to, once you've got the seller to agree on the sales price, 
it, I don't think it's right to come back and now expect the seller to take this 20-year-old home and put it back in new condition. I mean, I don't think that's right. I don't think that's very fair. That's my opinion. And um, we'd love to hear from you if you have any comments about that. So uh, I think we've got a phone. Let's Yeah, let's go straight to our phone lines right now where we've got Linda on the line. How you doing, Linda? Fine. How are you? Oh, it's such a blessed day today. Beautiful day. Gorgeous. I love it. Well, I appreciate you calling in. What's on your mind? Well, a few years ago, uh, my husband, um, we're from the West Columbia, Columbia area, but a few years ago, my husband um, bought a home in Ridge Spring, South Carolina, and the person, um, the agent, the um, this in the house, I think it was Russell Jeffco, and then it was a Johnston relative that actually sold my husband the house. Okay, well, let's and, don't use any names. Okay, okay. Okay. And it, okay. And then... Um, what happened was that so when they had the home inspection, um, the, um, in other words, they were fixing to do the heating and air inspection part, and the realtor told my husband, well, you don't, we don't need to do that. We already have a letter. And so I guess my husband could have said, no, I want it done, but he did not. He just said, okay, and they went on, and so they did the rest of the inspections. And so then... Um, Whenever we, um, whenever my husband called the um, power company out to, you know, to do the um, whatever they do, um, the electric company, they said that um, that the system was faulty. Um, it didn't pass inspection, and that we would have to either have a new system or either re retype things up or down. I don't know the de- you know the technicalities of it. But anyway, it ended up that we had to um, to pay um, about six thousand for a new system, and we were irate about that. And of course, both both relatives blamed it on each other, and um, and and of course the um, man that did the inspection, um, you know, he said, well. You know, they said they had a letter, and come to find out, they really didn't have a current letter. It was a letter from a couple of years before. And I think in the um, Columbia area, all the relatives require, like, the termite letter and the home inspection, I mean, the termite and the, um, um, you know, heat and air system inspection. But um, the um, company that my husband brought the house through, still in South Carolina, said that was not a South Carolina law. And she did not have that in her contract that you had to have that. Yeah, well, there are there is no law that says you have to have any inspection done. Um, that's an option that both the buyer and seller agree to. There is typically a, at least in the Midlands area, a ten day due diligence period that the buyer has the right to have any inspection they choose. Um, but there's no law that says you have to have any inspection done. So there's no, um, like, to, you know, like in the Columbia area, I know they always have the termite letter. They say, you, you know, we've built three houses before, and we sold houses, and they said you have to have the termite letter, you have to have the um, heat and air. But um, so they just they just say you have to do that, but there's not a law that requires it. Well, the, in some cases, your lender could require you to have certain types, like a, a CO100 letter, that they may require. Um, the, the type of financing may require you to have certain inspections, but other than that, there's no other law that says you have to do it. I think a, most agents would recommend, at a minimum, you have a home inspection, you have a, uh, a termite inspection, which is your CL100 letter, and you have a heating and air letter. Um, but the thing you want to be careful about, that heating and air, you, you want to make sure you got a good, well, obviously you want somebody good doing any of those. But that heating and air letter, um, really, all is pretty much saying in most cases is it worked, that unit worked when I went out there. But it doesn't guarantee you anything after they back out of the driveway. Yeah. So just yeah. keep that in well, mind. Yeah. Well, anyway, we, I just, um, you know, we, we were very um, disappointed. We didn't know who's, you know, um, who should have, um, you know, insisted that we check that out and possibly my husband should have but we just felt that um you know that that it was kind of misleading saying we have a letter and then that letter was not even a current letter right um at all but um 
And so that was never really produced, yeah. you know, ever. But anyway, I just wanted to say maybe um, for people who have home inspections, even if they say, um, you know, the other agent says, well, we, we have, we have um, you don't really need to check whatever it is if, if you think there. I mean, if it is something big, certainly go ahead and check it. Okay. Let the home inspector check it and so that his name is on there that he did that. Well, I appreciate you calling in and um, adding in to the show. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. Have a nice day. Okay, you, bye-bye. You do the same. All right. Yeah, you certainly want to have your inspections done. Take advantage of that due diligence period. Um, you certainly need to do that. And I'm not sure why an agent would would suggest not having an inspection. Um have the inspection. Get it done. You're you're fixing if you're buying a house, that's a very large investment that you're getting ready to make. Have the inspection done, but as we were trying to say a little bit earlier, just be reasonable about what you find or try to do with the inspection results. Um, you're being very. I think it's very unfair to tell the home inspector what not to write up when you've paid him to go out and write up anything he finds that is a defect, regardless of what the price would be to make it. Um, to, to, or to take the corrective action. So I think the home inspector, the good ones, they're going to write up every little thing. It's just make sure if you're the buyer, you need to understand the intent is not to try to get the seller to turn their 20, 30, 50-year-old home into a new home. Um, you're going to be buying that home with certain wear and tear. The things you want to be careful of and pay attention to are those latent defects the things that you did not have knowledge of or know about when you made your offer. That's where the home inspection and any other inspection needs to come into play. Um, the rest of it is just for information. Um, in my opinion, that's the way it needs to be done. But we can all work together, and I think we can all be very happy. Where we've been talking about this this relationship between the home inspector and the real estate agent a little bit, and, and I'd love to carry that conversation on. Um, if you have any questions, you can certainly call me. But I'm also taking right now, between now and the end of the show, which is about six or seven minutes, if you'd like to call in and guess the score between the Georgia and South Carolina football game tonight, whoever's the closest will win a $200 gift certificate or discount for a class at the Real Estate School for Success. So that's a little more than 50% off of any class. So if you would like to call in with your score, um, the number to call again is 978-9862, 978-9862. And right now we've got, let's see, Hyman on the line. How you doing, Hyman? Good. How you doing today? Oh, this is such a fine day today. I hope you're doing well. Lovely. Lovely. Got a prediction. Well, Got what a prediction. do you think is going to happen tonight? Well, we, uh, we're looking for a 31-28 to win for the Gamecocks. 31-28 to another close game. So you're thinking a field goal is going to do it? We'll see. We'll see. Are you going to the game by chance? No, no, I'm not. I have relatives on route, but I'm not uh, going to the game. You think the Heat's going to play a factor? You know, both teams will probably be submitted to the same conditions. So, uh, you know, they'll, they'll be on the same turf and they'll... Well, they're going to be in that bowl where there's no air no, down in that. It'll be warm. It'll be warm. It will be. I don't think it's supposed to get that hot today, but I guarantee it's going to feel hot down in that stadium. I promise you. I'm sure it'll be 100 degrees plus at game time on the field. Well, good. Well, I've got you down. South Carolina 31, Georgia 28. What's your last four, huh? Uh, 59... 19. All right, brother. Well, good luck and um, see how you do tonight. Good. I hope you feel better. Oh, oh, I feel fine. I just don't know why I sound so ridiculous. You still have the radio voice, so that's that's what counts. Uh-oh. Well, I appreciate you saying that. I hope you have a great day, buddy. Thanks. All righty. Well, if you have any more, if you have any predictions, you want to call them in. Otherwise, Hyman is the, de, what do you call him, de facto winner of this contest. Uh, but call in with your score. The number is 978-9862, 978-9862. Um, but let me go back to this, the, the home inspector thing again. And, and this is something that I, I've been saying, I've been recommending for a long time. 
But if you're looking at selling your house, and if you're a real estate agent looking at listing a house, I just think it's so important, especially today, to have the house inspected before you put it on the market. That's I think you'll find, seller, that's going to um, save you a substantial amount of money um, when you finally close on the property. Because the, uh, the worst thing you can do is put the house on the market, have somebody put it under contract, you've already agreed to the price, and now they have their inspection on the house, and now they're trying to get you to repair things that you didn't have any idea was wrong with the house. And and it, it, you, you could have saved a lot more money just by having the home inspection done ahead of time. It's also a really good marketing tool. So I always recommend have the house inspected before it goes on the market. Okay. Well, let's go back to our phone lines where now we've got John. How you doing, John? Hey, Frankie, good morning. How you doing? Oh, such a fine day today. Absolutely. It's wonderful. Are you going to the ball game? No, no, not, not going to be able to go, but going to be watching on TV. Okay. Well, what? who do you think is going to win? Gamecocks. Gamecocks. I'd say 35-28. Uh, 35-28. Yeah. Yeah. Any reason for that? That's just a good guess. Just uh, whatever, whatever feels right. Well, we know from last week Georgia has no defense, and or from what I could tell. So I'm really thinking Carolina is going to light up the scoreboard. I really do. I hope so. They're they're ready to do it. We'll see what they do. So um, so I got you down 35-28 Carolina. What's your last four, John? Okay, let's go three nine two two. Three nine two two. All right, got you down, brother. Have a good one. Thanks. All righty. Take care now. All right, well, we've got about a minute and a half, so if somebody else wants to make a prediction, you better call in real quick. The number is 978-9862, 978-9862, or it's just between John and Hyman, and we'll see who wins that. But while we're waiting on that, if I can go back to this home inspection, see, the other thing that, you, that you'll experience, I believe, if you're the seller, by having the pre-home inspection, it does become a marketing tool where now if they do discover any latent defects, <clears throat> excuse me, now you have time to go in there and have those things addressed and have them fixed ahead of time because um, you, you, you don't want the buyer finding it because I'm telling you that's, it's going to wind up costing you more in sales price than what it would have cost you if it had been repaired prior to putting the home on the market. Um, it also gives you some sense of, sense of peace when you do agree to whatever sales price you and the buyer agree to, n now you don't have that, oh, I wonder what kind of defects you're going to find and I'm going to have to pay for now on top of the, of the reduced sales price if you did agree to that. Um, so I, I think you'll find it's a huge peace of mind. Um, most of the home inspectors I know anyway, if, if you have the inspection and they write things up and then you have them fixed, They'll come back out typically at no charge and do a reinspection just to sh see that you did make the repairs, and then they can um, modify their inspection. So now you've got a report that if you wanted to, you could actually show to the buyers, um, at least show them what your home inspector found, and I think that makes the buyer feel a lot better about the property when they're making an offer also. So our time is about up, but I really appreciate you listening to today and if there's anything we can do for you please give us a call at the real estate school hope you have a great weekend you've been listening to success in real estate i'm frankie griffin on fm news and talk 100.1 wvoc